Hi everyone, it's Andy from Hobby Headquarters. Well, today we have a, uh, a brand new kit uh, that'll be out shortly from Tamiya. This is Tamiya's brand new 148 scale SS100 super heavy tractor. Uh, now this came out, the Germans designed this in the mid-30s and it was produced throughout most of the war. Uh, the Germans produced just about 1,100 of these and they were used in all types of matter for towing. Uh, because of its really robust frame and engine and transmission on it, it could tow up to 20 tons. So you'd see them towing eight, 88 millimeter uh, flat guns, it would be towing airplanes like they show in this one right here, like the Heinkel 219. Uh, all different manners of uh, airplanes you could tow, and it was even used by the uh, the Kriegsmarine for doing uh, different types of supply things. So all facets were used on it. Uh, it's a cool little vehicle in the sense that you can put it all over airfield dioramas, or if you have some of your other 48 scale product. To me, it had a uh, 88 out a while ago, so you can even have that pulling on it. So uh, I was looking inside. It's a grand total of four sprues, so it's a uh, super well designed. Really, uh, really think it'll be a cool little vehicle. So let's get started on it. Okay, since this is a brand new uh, kit, brand new tool, I thought I would just take like a minute and just show you the individual uh, sprues and how they're all laid out. Uh, this sprue obviously has our chassis, which the uh, transmission and all that stuff in the bottom of the engine is all molded into the pan, which from the side you'll be able to see all that, so that'll look really good. You have your, your fenders here, radiator, some of the other transmission parts, so that all looks really good. We also have two of the same wheel sprues. This has just been cut off of the main sprue. So this is your what will make up your wheels and your leaf springs. And then you finally come over here to some of the interior of the vehicle, and including a figure. And we have our uh, slide molded body, as you can see right here. And that was done up very nicely. It's nice that, especially because of some of the shapes and angles on this, being slide molded, we don't have to worry about putting different pieces together that uh, so you don't have anything line up improperly. And finally, we just have the glass brew right here. So you got your side windows, your windshield, and the other little windows for the back. Okay, I've uh, got the, uh, the parts for the very first five or six uh, steps on this kit together. together. Now I put the uh, leaf springs on just before I started filming here. And then the, your front fenders are going to just glue onto place right in here. And the braces are already molded in. So what we can do is just put a touch of glue on each one of those to make sure they stay in there. But you can see they already want to pretty much almost go right into place on that. And once we get those set up we can slide the, uh, the back fenders on and just putting a little bit of glue on each one of those pins and that just pops into place there and then what we can do is use the bottom of the uh, fender here or the uh, step to bolt, uh, glue that onto here so that'll make a nice sturdy surface for it so uh, before this all glue sets up I'm gonna go ahead and put some glue on that and it's just a matter after that is set up to going ahead and put the uh, structural support underneath the uh, side steps. Okay, now I'm just attaching the rear transmission and axle. And we're about to do the same to the front. And then after that, we have our towing unit that'll just slide into place. It snaps right inside there, and we'll put a little glue on that as well. Now, I've also gone ahead and sanded up and glued together the, uh, the dually back tires, as well as the, uh, the front tires. I'll show you what they look like in place, but I plan on painting those separately.
Okay, uh, what I've done now is I've assembled a bunch of the uh, little sub-assemblies and technically I've got all of the uh, construction complete on this kit. And just uh, to kind of talk about it a little bit, it's exactly what you'd expect out of a Tamiya kit. This is a grand total of like maybe four hours total of work. Everything fits precisely, exactly the way it's supposed to. Uh, just, just a great kit all the way around. Now, the main reason that I haven't assembled it any further is because we're going to need to do some painting first. And that is primarily with the, uh, the uh, driver's compartment, the seats and things like that. And that's because we're going to have windows we have to put in here. And yes, you can go in there and mask that off. I just find that to be a lot of extra work that if, if you don't need to do, it's not worth doing it on it. So what we're going to do on this is we're going to paint the interior on this, the German gray color. Then we're going to paint the uh, all the uh, seat cushion like a semi-gloss black to kind of represent like a leather where it's not too, too shiny. And you're mainly only going to be seeing it through the windshield and the side window. So, But just enough that you can see the detail inside. So we're going to get that painted first. And I actually plan to do that next. Now, on the uh, the body, you can see I've started attaching all like the window frames, the mirrors, things like that. The uh, last little couple pieces I need to put on are the uh, front grill, and then for, as for the body, we have the fuel tank that will uh, pop right into place here, and then we have another stowage bin on the back, which I'll glue those in very soon. So what we'll do is, like I said, we'll get that painted, we'll paint the interior of all in here, so if you look through, you're not gonna see this, this plastic color. Then we can uh, also go ahead and paint the entire outside of this vehicle. Once that, or excuse me, body, we'll pop the, uh, the windows into place, get that all lined up, spray all this separately, and there'll be like the final thing we can do is just drop this into place. And as you can see how well even all this just fits just on its own. And finally, we will paint the wheel separately. And I went and dug out my paint mask, my circle template, excuse me. And I found it was lucky that this one, a 7 8 fits perfectly over the hole. So we'll be able to paint the entire thing black, go back over it, hit it with the uh, whatever body color. Now, as for body color, I've kind of torn in, in a couple ways. I didn't want to just do it in German gray. Uh, I wanted to do it a little bit, something a little bit different for the for the exterior, and I'm kind of debating back and forth, and I'll decide in the next few minutes before we start painting, obviously. But it's probably going to either be German gray with a lot of dark yellow over it, as if they camouflaged over that, or I might just go and just do the entire like the box art, the uh, dark yellow with uh, green uh, camouflage on it. So either one. I'm trying to find some more pictures online and seeing which was more common. Uh, and of course a lot of it's depending on time period and things like that. Then the last couple of little pieces we need to put on are the grill, which the indicator poles are on the outside will have the little white dot on the tip. And the other last little piece that we'll put on is the muffler. Now the muffler will obviously just glue in two little places, but I want to kind of give this a little bit of like a rust effect on it uh, because of the amount of heat and stuff on it. And it look, I think it just looks really good on, uh, when you do that, even though you only see just the tiniest little bit. And to me is also included a, a tow bar here. And they show this is like hooking up to the Heinkel 219 or to the ME 262. So uh, we'll, I just pop that in. That can pop out at any time, so we don't have to worry about that. But I just think it's a very, really cool looking little vehicle. And like I said, it was just a great, great build. Uh, this is definitely probably like a uh, after painting and weathering, maybe a two, three day top. So this is a great weekend project. I also uh, really appreciate the fact that Tamiya is going ahead and making more airfield vehicles, such as this little uh, tow truck right here. There is, uh, it's so nice that if you're going to be doing a diorama and you have airplanes, to have tow trucks and fuel trucks, supply trucks, all that kind of stuff that would be around an airfield. And don't get me wrong, I like the tanks. The tanks are great in 40A scale, but having all those little things really, I think, make make a little a little scenery pop having that kind of stuff so it's great that they're doing all these new kind of little vehicles for it so i'm going to go ahead and start doing the painting right now and i will show you a little bit since pieces of each part of the painting on it but uh, uh we'll start doing that right now we're going to spray the interior of the cab german gray followed up by spraying the uh, seats the semi-gloss black 
Okay, as you just saw, I painted the entire interior, uh, and I also went back over and did the uh, the black seats. I'll show you that in a minute. That's still drawing. Uh, now we're going to use our NATO black uh, to go over the entire amount because we are going to do the black and white coat because I have decided to do the dark yellow with the uh, the green camouflage on it. Now these parts have all been glued into place. The body is still separate, but I just thought I'd put it down there so we can paint it all as one piece. We're going to start off by spraying everything on the vehicle right now, the uh, the NATO black. Wheels, the body, all the different pieces on it, including the under chassis. And once that is done, we will spray the uh, the highlighted areas with just regular flat white. And what that will do, we'll give us our shadow and light coat on it. And once the uh, shadow and light coat is applied, we can go ahead, as you can see right here what it looks like, we're going to go ahead with dark yellow XF60 from Tamiya and just lightly mist on over the entire vehicle so we can see a lot of the, uh, the toning effect come through. And I'll just quickly show you what we're going to do for the, uh, the muffler like I was telling you earlier. Just taking a little Tamiya's brown panel liner putting a little thin coat on there and then we'll just take a mixture of different types of Vallejo pigment uh, for this particular one I'm going to be using old rust as well as a little bit of burnt sienna we'll just kind of blend it in going back and forth um, blotting it on getting different textures on it and what I'll do is after this dries I'll come back and show you what it looks like and here's the uh, the dried uh, pigment powder on the the muffler underneath and we'll go ahead and glue that in once we finish painting the uh, the body so as you can see I've gone ahead and painted the uh, the green camouflage and have sprayed it with uh, the dull coat to seal in all the paint now the top is not attached of course so now we can go ahead and glue in our cab uh, put our windows in get those glued in we've also got the uh, the wheels all detailed up so we can glue those on and then we can start weathering Okay, now we're going to do some scratches uh, over the vehicle, and this is something that I kind of found out by accident, but before you throw away the, uh, the glue uh, top from your, to me, extra thin cement, take a look at the, uh, the tip, and for doing fine, fine work, this brush is excellent. It it keeps its form perfectly. It doesn't deform at all, and you can do some of the finest little scratches. And I'll kind of zoom in here a little bit for you guys. And remember, this is a 48 scale vehicle, and you can go and just put some tiny little scratches anywhere you want across the tops of all these things. And the brush just works incredibly on that. And like I said, almost threw this away, but now I'm finding it to be, I'm gonna save every single one of these. because, the, And it has the handle with the big tip here, so you can really get in tight. And for the uh, the paint, I'm using, you know, the my typical chipping color down the line here, which is the brown, NATO black, and a little touch of red in it. But I'm gonna go over and finish scratching this up and even for doing these the longer scratches, it just does probably one of the finest brushes I've, I've ever had for doing something like that. And we're also going to put a few more little scratches and things on wear marks using our foam brush using the same color paint. I want it to look like it's been in an airfield for a while and then you know heavy use. Now I've gone ahead and uh, glued the wheels on as you can see and we have the interior inside. Haven't glued it on yet because I still have to put the, uh, the windows in so just put it in place right there but it j basically just snaps right into place. And lastly now we're going to put on a little bit of our uh, enamel thinner because we're going to put some little rust and streaking grime effect on it. And remember it's just a matter of wetting the area with the enamel thinner. Taking care of that. I'm going to use right now light rust. Put a few little drops here and there, some lines, however you want to do it. And then it's just a matter of taking that same brush again and just taking off the excess. Or when it comes to the sides, 
dragging it down and making some nice streaks. So we're gonna go over the whole vehicle. You've see, guys seen me do this many, many times. So I'm gonna do the whole vehicle with the, uh, mainly the grime, but a few little areas, we'll put some little light rust marks on it. So we'll do that, come back, show you what it looks like. Okay, now to add a little bit of a dirty dust effect to the wheel, we're just gonna take a cotton swab and taking our Vallejo pigments, the uh, light sienna and we're just going to go over it and then polish the the outer edge of the wheel so it has less dirt appear on it okay we've gone ahead and put the uh, the decals on now now we're just taking a little black panel liner and laying it over into the little slots inside the uh, the grill right here we'll also be putting it on all the little lights and any other little areas on the vehicle that we want to have a little bit of like a deep shadow uh, into it and like I said this is just to me is black panel liner and you're just touching it into now I've already put one coat on this but you can see you just touch it into there and it'll just fill in each one of those little uh, the little lines to give it a nice little shadow and that can work on any of these little little areas right in here that you want to give a little bit more depth to it just slightly touch it to it and it'll outline what you're looking for and then it'll dry flat of course too so I got to put another coat of mark fit strong onto the decal I think it slid slightly on me down there too I just noticed but we can we can fix that because it's not dried up yet so I'm gonna go ahead and finish all that up and we'll come back and show you what it looks like well, here we are. Here's our completed model. Kind of give you a little bit of a look around the entire vehicle. I have to say, uh, to me, it did a wonderful job producing this kit. Uh, everything fit together exactly the way you would expect it to. The, the kit took a, probably about a grand total of about five hours to assemble. Uh, went together like I said very easily and then it's just a matter of how much time you want to spend doing weathering and painting and things like that but uh, came out very very cool and I think it would be a great addition that if you're going to do any type of little little vignette or scene that you want to have a uh, heavy duty vehicle that can pull vehicles around or with figures and stuff it just adds a good backdrop uh, to your 48 scale aircraft or if you're even having, like I was saying earlier too, the 88 millimeter gun could be towed by this or any other, um, pretty much any other big artillery piece. This could tow up to 20 tons, of course. Now, you guys may have noticed in the background right here, we had a uh, P-51 Mustang. What I thought I would do right here is kind of give you an idea of size and scale. Now, yes, I know this is an American airplane and a German uh, tractor, so they aren't going to be normally in the same scene. But like I said, it's just for a size of scale. This is to me as P51 that, uh, that we built up quite a while ago, actually before YouTube. So that's why there's no videos on that. But it's a it's a great example of uh, P51, and to show it off next to a 48 scale vehicle looks really cool. So I want to thank you guys as always for watching. I really appreciate all my viewers and subscribers. Uh, please stay tuned because we have many more videos coming.